Today we will be showing you how to replace the robotics assembly and the robotics cable or spool in a quantum scalar i3 and i6 tape library. This replacement will require downtime and should be scheduled with your system administrator. In this video, we will only be covering the replacement of a robot in a control module without any expansions attached to it. If you have a system with expansions attached, please reach out to us at support at therocketplatform.com and we can give you further assistance. To begin, please note that there are two different procedures for this robot replacement. One will be in the rack if you have room above the library in your rack. This will not require powering down the library. The second procedure will be removing the library from the rack if there is no room above it and will require powering down the library. Please use whichever method applies to you. We will begin with the in-rack method. You will first begin by positioning the robot for a replacement. By doing this from either the front panel or from the web GUI, it will also put the robot offline for replacement. From the web GUI, select Devices, then hit the plus button next to Robotics. Select the checkbox for the robot, and then in the Operations panel, click Position. You will get a positioning window where you can select Replace and then hit Apply. Alternatively, from the front panel, you can go into Service Functions and then Maintenance. Then you can go to Robot Position and then Replace. Once you have done one of these two functions, the robot will be offline and ready for replacement. You can then remove the top cover of the library while it is still in the rack. There are two types of top cover for this library, a slide-on version and a screw-down version. Please use whatever method is needed to remove your specific version of top cover. Now you will need to ensure you have the appropriate replacement version of robotics. There is a Generation 1 and a Generation 2. The Generation 2 will have a G2 embossed on the front motor. If you need to order a replacement Generation 1 robot for your i3 or i6 library from the Rocket Platform, please use part number 3-04950-02. If you need to order a replacement Generation 2 robot for your i3 or i6 library from the Rocket Platform, please use part number 3-07769-01. Once the top cover is removed, you can pull the robot up using the two lift points until it is out of the top of the tracks and rest it carefully on the top of the library at a slight angle. Then you can unlatch the rear where the picker cable or spool is located and unhook the picker cable or spool from the picker and set the picker to the side. Now we will show you how to remove the two different types of picker cable and spool from the library. If you do not need to replace your picker cable or spool, you can skip ahead to the robot reinstallation. If this is an i3 base module, you will likely have a single small robotics cable that is amber in color. It can simply be detached from the circuit board inside the library cavity and replaced with a new one, ensuring that you attach the correct end to the circuit board as notated on the cable. If this is an I3 that has ever had expansions attached to it, or it is an I6 of any variety, it will have a cable spool instead. To remove and replace this, you will need to go around to the rear of the library and undo the two thumb screws holding the spooling mechanism in place. Then you can slide the spool straight back and out of the library and insert the replacement, ensuring to secure it completely before returning to the front of the library. Now you can install the replacement robot. You will start by connecting the picker cable or spool to the left rear of the picker in the same manner as you unfastened it previously. Then you will ensure the plastic clip is fully shut and fastened to hold the picker cable in place. Now you can line up the gears on the picker with the guide rails while holding the robot by the lift handles and then carefully push it down into the library all the way using even pressure on both sides until it is flat on the bottom of the library. You can then replace the top cover. Now you can go into the web GUI or the front LCD panel and vary the robot back on. In the web GUI, you will navigate to the same window as earlier and under operations select vary on. In the front panel, you would navigate to service and then maintenance and then robot vary on or off. You can now skip ahead to the post installation verification described at the end of this video. If you do not have room above the library in the rack and need to remove it from the rack, you will first need to power the library off. You can do so using the power shutdown menu from the front panel or the shutdown option from the web GUI. Once the library is powered down, label and remove all cables from the rear of the library. You can now go around to the front of the library and undo the mounting hardware that holds the library in the rack and then remove the library chassis from the rack and set it on a flat level surface. 
you can then remove the top cover of the library. There are two types of top cover for this library, a slide-on version and a screw-down version. Please use whatever method is needed to remove your specific version of top cover. Now you will need to ensure you have the appropriate replacement version of robotics. There is a Generation 1 and a Generation 2. The Generation 2 will have a G2 embossed on the front motor. If you need to order a replacement Generation 1 robot for your i3 or i6 library from the Rocket Platform, please use part number 3-04950-02. If you need to order a replacement Generation 2 robot for your i3 or i6 library from the Rocket Platform, please use part number 3-07769-01. Once the top cover is removed, you can pull the robot up using the two lift points until it is out of the top of the tracks and rest it carefully on the top of the library at a slight angle. Then you can unlatch the rear where the picker cable or spool is located and unhook the picker cable or spool from the picker and set the picker to the side. Now we will show you how to remove the two different types of picker cable and spool from the library. If you do not need to replace your picker cable or spool, you can skip ahead to the robot reinstallation. If this is an I3 base module, you will likely have a single small robotics cable that is amber in color. It can be simply detached from the circuit board inside the library cavity and replaced with a new one, ensuring that you attach the correct end to the circuit board as notated on the cable. If this is an I3 that has ever had expansions attached to it, or is an I6 of any variety, it will have a cable spool instead. To remove and replace this, you will need to go around to the rear of the library and undo the two thumb screws holding the spooling mechanism in place. Then you can slide the spool straight back and out of the library and insert the replacement, ensuring to secure it completely before returning to the front of the library. Now you can install the replacement robot. You will start by connecting the picker cable or spool to the left rear of the picker in the same manner as you had unfastened it previously. Then you will ensure the plastic clip is fully shut and fastened to hold the picker cable in place. Now you can line up the picker gears with the guide rails while holding the picker by the lift handles and carefully push it down into the library all the way using even pressure on both sides until it is flat on the bottom of the library. You can then replace the top cover. Now you will slide the library back into the rack and secure it in place using the mounting hardware that you removed earlier. Then go around to the rear of the library and install all data cables using the labeling you did earlier and ensure all data cables and ethernet cables are back in their proper places. The library should start up once the power cables have been inserted into the power supplies, which will be last. The library should now completely initialize. You will now need to perform the Installation Verification Test, or IVT, in order to verify the replacement robot is working complete and correctly. This test must be run from the web GUI of the library and will require a scratch tape to be inserted into the library in the IE station. Also, all RAS tickets on the library must be cleared and the library must be in a ready state with no jobs occurring and no tapes in any of the drives. Once you have ensured that the aforementioned parameters are met, you will need to eject the IE magazine in the library. On the I3, this is the right side magazine. On the I6, it is the top right hand magazine. By hitting the button next to this magazine, it will unlock it and allow it to be pulled out. Place your scratch tape in the bottom slot of the forwardmost column in the magazine and then reinsert the magazine. The library will inventory the magazine and then come to a ready state once more. Now, in the web GUI, select Diagnostics and then select the checkbox next to Installation Verification Test. Then, in the Operations dialog, click Test. Ensure Complete IVT is selected and hit Apply. A progress window will inform you of the progress of the IVT and once the magazine tests are complete, that is the end of the IVT. As long as the IVT has passed successfully, the scratch tape can be removed and the library is now ready for operation. If you are having any issues with your robot, cable, or spool installation, or if the IVT diagnostic did not pass successfully, please reach out to us at support at therocketplatform.com and we will be happy to assist you.